Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jonathan Baylor and April Perry, and we are back with another Sane Show, specifically part two of an epic two-part series where the courageous and delightful April Perry is, is sharing some pretty uh, awesome and empowering stuff with us about her personal experience going sane. So if you haven't listened to the previous episode, please check it out, because we're going to pick up where we stopped with that one. And April Perry <laughs> is in the house. What's up, April? Okay, today we're pretending like April Perry just met Jonathan Baylor, and I'm tell telling you a little bit about where I am physically, and we're going to talk about how I can make some very safe, sane tweaks to what I'm already doing to just optimize my results, and I'd love to explain what my goals are. Does that sound like a good start? Sounds fantastic. I'm excited to rock and roll with it. Okay, because I know there are a lot of women who say, okay, yes, health is my number one. I'm not going to starve myself. I'm not going to be crazy with exercise, like devote my whole life to living at the gym. A lot of the women I work with are entrepreneurs, they're mothers, they care about their community, maybe their churches. They're doing a lot of things in their lives and trying to balance it. And they don't have the time or energy to devote two hours a day at the gym. And they want their food to just be automatic. Now, the last episode, one of the things I'm really grateful we talked about is that, yeah, where I am right now is I've been eating sane foods <clears throat> for a couple of years. I don't really think about it. <laughs> I just, I kind of have the same things I eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'll have some snacks in there. If late at night, I feel like I want to eat something, I do. I just, I don't really think about it. And I'm able to fit in my clothes, do what I want, feel happy. Things are good in my life. All right. But for the last couple of years, there's been a lot of just added stresses, most of them really good stresses as things have been growing in my life and my business. And I've been making improvements in my family. Like things are so good right now in my life. And I actually have a little bit more bandwidth now to be able to invest a little more time and energy in my health and wellness. So I want to do that, but I don't want to do it in a way that's going to harm me or a way that's going to deliver suboptimal results. And so I'm coming to you for help. Now, I don't know what my body fat percentage is right now. I just don't, but I know, and I'm totally fine. Just I'm coming in as your client, very public. Um, I weigh about 152 pounds right now. I'm 38. I've had four children. My parents both kind of struggled with their weight. Um, my mom always, she had eight children and she was always counting calories and never achieving her goals that way and had a lot going on there. Um, I do sleep pretty well. I'm kind of a stressed person, <laughs> like not trying to be, but I'm very conscientious. And so I have to work through not being stressed, not in a bad stress way, but just like I'm very excited about a lot of things. So I'm really active. I'm always thinking of things. Um, I shouldn't have a stressed person. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a, a very, very active, very involved person. I don't just usually sit around, you know, just being relaxed. Like I don't ever lay by a pool. I'm always listening to podcasts or doing something because that's the kind of person I am. Um, my goal weight... I don't know if I have a specific goal weight. Um, after I had Spencer, my fourth, he's nine now, I pretty much starved until I was 135 pounds and I couldn't get below 135 no matter how much I starved myself, like how little I ate and how many days I went to the gym. Like that 135 was like the lowest I could get. In high school, I was probably about 140 in high school and um, being really active as a cheerleader and everything. I'm 5'5". Five, five, and... Um, I I do go to the gym once a week to do eccentric exercises. I rollerblade a couple times a week. I take my puppy <laughs> and that's kind of where I am right now. And I go walking with my husband, you know, a few nights a week. Okay. <laughs> so that's a starting point. When were you, when you were 18, I'm assuming that's a fair assessment of when you were at your f fittest. Would you say that that's a fair assumption? Actually, no, because when I was in high school, I feel like, I mean, so I was super active in high school, but I feel like I was eating like a lot. Like I would take a really big lunch and I didn't even think about food and I would eat a lot of breads and things like that. Um, specifically when I was 18 and I went away to college, I did gain that freshman 20. I had no idea what I was, should have been eating. So I would say, um, 
you know, when I was 18, I probably, I don't even know if I weighed myself, but. Yeah, so, so don't, the weight actually is irrelevant. What was your size when you were your probably fittest? My fittest was probably when I was maybe 17. Well, but then I was actually really fit right when I got married because I was started learning about nutrition, eating really healthfully. So I would say my fittest was when I was about 20 and I was like a size, between a size six and a size eight. Okay. So your, your fittest is between a six and eight size. Yes. Okay. And is your goal to look like a fit 38 year old who's had four children or is your goal to look like a fit 21 year old who's had no children? So I'm actually good looking like a 38 year old. And the thing is I actually still wear between a size six and an eight. I just feel like around my midsection, my arms, my legs, I feel like I just could get more toned and just feel more comfortable. And or do you, is your goal to look like a 38 year old who hasn't had four children or a 38 year old who hasn't? <laughs> well, four see, children? I just don't know. I don't know. I just want to look better than I do, but I don't know what to compare that to. So. Well, what, what you would generally compare it to is other 38 year olds in our his, historically uh, who have had children. And I can promise you that they, you are doing quite well. So your goal is actually to look what the, female glamour magazines uh, would say that a 38 year old who's had children should look like. And we can do that. That's not a value. That's fine. Right? Like I'm 30. How old am I? I'm 33. <laughs> okay. um, and I look better than I looked when I was 18 because like I, I it's my job and we're probably going to record some exercise videos at some point. <laughs> okay. And I want to be like, we want to look really fit. So no judgment there. Um, okay. It's just really important to get specific on those goals. Yeah. So what you would do uh, especially having had four children, having a stressful life, is mm -hmm. you're just going to need to start to look at food and exercise like you would look at how you develop and strengthen your family and how you develop and strengthen your business, where it is something that you diligently plan and think about daily, weekly, hourly. What that means is it's not accident. You will not accidentally look supranaturally fit ever. So okay. it's going to become more like any, any skill in life. If you want to have a successful business, if you want to be a successful athlete, if you want to be a successful artist, you will not stumble upon artistic talent. You will have to apply dedicated time and energy for years, and then you will be a beautiful painter. Uh, if you want to have a wonderful family, you will spend dedicated time and energy on your family, and then you'll get great results. So all we'll do is we'll take this standard sane template, non starchy vegetables, nutrient dense protein, whole food fats, and we're going to ask how much are you willing to give up or sacrifice taste and flexibility? Because if you look at two ends of the spectrum, one is let's call it nutritional serenity, which is I'm not willing to compromise on taste. I'm not willing to compromise on flexibility. I'm fine looking healthy. And I just want to not think about eating non starchy vegetables, nutrient dense protein, whole food fats, low fructose fruits in that order, treat yourself rarely, but you know, your body's a temple. So you're not going to put garbage in it. On the other end of the spectrum is I'm a fitness competitor who is like all over Instagram. And I like taking pictures of myself in skimpy clothes and posting them on Instagram because I define myself by how my body looks. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with <laughs> that's that. That's not me. That's not me, Jonathan. <laughs> uh, those people are just going to say uh, flexibility and taste does not matter to them. What matters to them is how they look on Instagram. So they're gonna eat the same basic stuff that does not taste particularly good every single day. Okay. So here is, I think, what can help clarify your um, your prescription for me. I'm actually getting pretty excited about this. So let's say that the effort scale of one to 10, the 10 effort is me trying to look like I've never had children and I want people to be like, whoa, you look so good. That's like the 10 effort. A one effort is just what I'm doing right now. Just whatever. I'm happy. I'm busy with other stuff. Here's my food. You know, what if you could give me a prescription for like a five? But here's the thing. I want you to tell me what you would suggest I do. But then I want to come back on the next podcast and give a report on whether that worked for me or whether I reassessed my goals. Because the thing is, unless I really know what's required specifically, 
I just don't know if I'm willing to do it. I may, and it may be something that's really not that hard for me because I'm one of those people that once you point me in a path, I'm really good at getting things done. But I want that path obviously needs to work with my life. I'm not going to put my family out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sacrifice more than what this increased health or perceived health would would do for me. Like I, I really, I, I just don't know if that's what I want or not. So can you kind of explain what a level five would be? And then we can, uh, I'll report back next time. 100%. So here's a level five. You can write this down. And if you're listening to this, you can write this down as well. This is for a female. Level five. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> and it's I'm not actually gonna getting sound, out my pen. I'm gonna, it's not going to sound doing. sexy. It's going to sound effective because okay. that's what we're talking about here. So okay. you're going to eat four times a day. And what I'm like, I'm going to, you're going to hear a different tone in my voice than you normally hear because like, if you want these results, you have to do this. Okay. So it's, I'm not just, you know, whatevs. We're talking about a different type of results than we normally talk about. You're going to eat four okay. times per day. And if, period, there is no other eating. So okay. you're going to eat four times per day because I don't think you're going to exercise that much. So four times per day. Okay. And at each one of those meals, you're going to eat at least three up to five servings of non-starchy vegetables with at least 80% of those being green leafy vegetables or green vegetables like broccoli and asparagus are fine. Okay. And then during those meals, you're gonna have one serving as defined by the same framework, which is gonna be about the size of the palm of your hand of clean nutrient dense protein. So if that's conventional meat, it has to be lean. If it's grass fed okay. meat, it's fine because it's automatically lean. And you're not gonna cook with any added oils ever, period. Okay, so, so how do you make sure it doesn't stick to the pan? Use water or use mm -hmm. like spray coconut oil, very little of it. Okay. The like best options are things like canned tuna, grass lean cuts of grass fed beef. Uh, okay. What about those salmon patties? Do those are those just count or heavy salmon, like fresh salmon? Yeah, I would recommend fresh salmon in those cases. The salmon patties have canola oil added to them. So that's not going to be as helpful for you. Okay. And if you're eating salmon, that's going to bleed into the next category, which is one serving of whole food fats, possibly two. You don't, you shouldn't be famished. So right. one to two servings of whole food fat. Sorry, you're not going to exceed. You can't exceed five servings of whole food fats per day, period. So mm -hmm. however you want to divide those up, you're going to go between three and five servings of whole food fats across the day. Okay. And I would like for at least one of them to be in it. So you're going to have basically three meals where you've got one serving of whole food fats and one meal where you have two. And that's where like things like eggs and salmon come into play. So salmon is a fatty fish, super healthy fats, but it's a fatty fish. So you're probably going to get a serving of nutrient dense protein and a serving of whole food fats in your serving of salmon. Okay is the fatty fish. Same thing with oh. eggs. If you're going to do eggs, you would do like two whole eggs is one serving of whole food fat. So you would do something like five or you know four egg whites and two whole eggs. That's going to give you a serving of nutrient dense protein and a serving of whole food fats. And the definitions of these servings are all available free of charge at sanesolution.com in our blueprint. Okay. So that's the basic template. So you've got, you know, three to four servings of non-starchy vegetables, 80% of which are green leafy vegetables, a serving of lean nutrient dense protein, or if it's going to be not so lean, that bleeds into your servings of whole food fats, which is between three and five per day period. So that's eating. Exercise is eccentric exercise once a week, but you've got to be increasing the resistance every week. So you're okay. tracking what you're doing and you're consciously saying, if I did eccentric leg press with 200 pounds last week, I'm not going to just do 200 pounds again because I'm stronger okay. this week than I was last week. So I'm going to go up to 205 and I'm going to continue okay. diligently tracking and increasing that. And then I'm going to do high quality interval training once a week. Okay. And I'm also going to find some way to be active, not jogging, but I mean like walking, physical activity, yoga, Pilates, all that stuff counts at least three times per week for okay. 30 to 60 minutes of being active or restorative activity. And then I'm okay. going to sleep minimum of six hours per night, period. Ideally more like seven or eight. Okay. 
and I'm going to just drink an abundance of water and I'm never going to drink calories unless it's a green smoothie that I made. So no milk, no nothing. I'm not drinking calories. I'm drinking water, green tea, black coffee, other forms of herbal tea. If you go out to a restaurant while you're doing this, do you bring your own food? I mean, like, do you eat at a restaurant? If you're Absolutely. Doing this? Salads are a great option. So I okay. would get a salad, put the dressing Does on the Does romaine side. count as deep green or is that just yeah. spinach? No, nope. romaine is a, uh, considered a deep green leafy vegetable. Okay. And yeah, I eat out all the time when I'm on the road and I would just okay. generally order just what we talked about. So I'm going to get either chicken or fish or grass fed beef if they have beef. And then my two sides will be vegetables. And I will say, well, for me, I have different goals than you. So I might actually have some butter on them. But for you, mm. you wouldn't be adding any butter to them. Now, would you ever have Greek yogurt or cottage cheese or is that out? Uh, yes, those could be your servings of nutrient-dense protein if you want. I would, okay. uh, I would be using, but again, remember we're, we are going above and beyond here. So for example, there's a difference between fat-free Greek yogurt, fat-free cottage cheese, and the different gradations. If you had full-fat cottage cheese, that's gonna okay. be some of your whole food fat servings. Okay. versus your nutrient dense protein. Okay. Um, and so the four times a day when you eat, does it matter what hours of the day? No. Like, do I have to eat the same time every day or I can nope. just eat four times a day? And you don't have okay. to eat four times per day. If you eat three times per day, if you're full eating Good less call. than I just described, the only things that are required are one that you're not hungry because you're not at a level 10 yet, right? Level five. So yeah. you don't want to feel like garbage here. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Is you have to eat double digit servings of non-starchy vegetables, period. Okay. You have to eat at least three servings of nutrient dense protein, period. And you yeah. have to eat a minimum of two servings of whole food fats per day. And if you're, if you're only at like two of them, we got to make sure that those are coming from therapeutic sources. So omega-3 rich sources, chia seeds, flax seeds, salmon, fatty fish, or monounsaturated fats. So olives, okay. avocados, macadamia nuts, or medium chain triglyceride, which is primarily found in coconut. And that's only if you're, you know, if you're eating barely any fat, we need to make sure that it's the best fat. Otherwise okay. your health will suffer. Okay. I'm actually really excited about this. I love that I don't have to be hungry and it's just optimizing it. So one other just question as far as whether I'm deciding if I'm eating four times a day or I'm eating three times a day, do you ask yourself the question, like, am I hungry? Or how do you assess when you're hungry? How do you make sure that you are eating at appropriate times? And how do you assess when you're full? Like, do you just make sure you're eating slowly so you can tell? What, what do you do? The best way to assess if you are hungry is to, if you feel hungry, drink a bunch of liquid. So drink like 16 ounces of liquid, okay. wait 10 minutes and see if you're still hungry. Okay. If you are to judge if you're full or not, eat your non-starchy vegetables first to all completion. Of them first. The three to five servings. Eat all of your non-starchy vegetables first, then eat your nutrient dense protein, then drink 16 ounces of liquid, then wait five minutes, wait another five minutes. And if you're still hungry, eat more. Okay, so at, let's say I did my three meals like you just outlined with the whole food fats and the proteins and I've got that in there. And then at the end of the night, now it's, so let's say it's like eight o'clock at night and I'm thinking I'm kind of snackerish right now. <laughs> I could use something to snack on. Where like last night when I felt that way, I ate a whole cucumber and then I had some carrots and then I had a cup of plain Greek yogurt with some xylitol in it and a little bit of natural peanut butter. So like that's what I ate last night when I was feeling like hungry. If I were feeling hungry at this point and I just snacked on vegetables in the evening, I could just stop at the vegetables. I don't have to make it a complete meal with protein as well. Correct. And you'd also be sensitive to the types of vegetables you're eating. Carrots are a starchier okay. vegetable. They're much okay. higher in sugar than say spinach, for example. Okay. So you might crunch more on celery. Uh, green vegetables in general are going to be the way to go. And peanut okay. butter is not sane. It's in the middle. It's a legume. Okay. So I just so, cut that out. Don't do that. Yep. If I'm yep. a five. And if you're okay. just feeling snacky, if you're a five, you might just say, okay, like I'm feeling snacky, but 
I want to look supernatural. So I'm not going to totally deprive myself, but I'm just going to eat pretty hardcore sane vegetables right now because if I'm just feeling snacky, like think about it, like, you know, I'm, I'm Michael Phelps and Michael Phelps feels like not training. Get in the pool, Michael. Cause <laughs> you know, that's, that's your goal. You know what I'm saying? Okay. One more question. If I were doing like, you know, we had that banana bread when you came to our house with Angela that Aaliyah made for you that had a lot of coconut flour in it, but it did have bananas. Would you tell me to stay away from any of that for your whole food fats? Don't have anything that has fruits in it. Correct. And I'm eating no fruits. Because it's not incident, right? That would be not in the servings framework we just talked about, okay. right? That's because incorporating there was no... fruits is not a five. Well, we would have to modify the other. I mean, if you want, I it's the, it's easier to do it without fruits. You're going to get better results okay. just using vegetables. Fruits are vegetables with more sugar, basically. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I feel like really happy because what I'm excited about is I have a framework that I can try. Now I'm not like committing to do this for a whole month or whatever, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into my life. And then next episode, I'm gonna let you know how it goes. And I'm gonna actually be journaling along the way how I feel. Does it work out with my values? Is it working out with my schedule, my life, and my goals? Because on one hand, this could be exactly what I've been needing to do to take sanity to the next level. On the other hand, I might say, you know what? Now Jonathan's just explained what it will take for me to achieve that level. And I've decided that I care about other things more. And so I'm not going to do that right now, which in either case, it's up to me right, <laughs> to decide that. Yeah, and I want to be really clear with everybody that like when I say I'm not making any value judgments, I mean that because you know what? We talked about April 1 versus 10. For me, I'm at a nine. So yeah. I will- <laughs> You live that life, yeah. I, I will, if someone's going to feel bad because they tried to be polite and served me a piece of chocolate cake, I will very respectfully treat that chocolate cake like a veg, like someone who's halal would treat <laughs> foods that's not i mean i'm not going to be a jerk about it but there are no exceptions it's, it doesn't i don't ever when i travel that's just this is how i am and so it's really not a value judgment but what we have to shy away from is expecting supernatural results with no effort right that's yeah. that's the that's the that's the calling card of charlatans <laughs> you can magically look supernaturally fit without any effort what we're saying with saying is you can look super healthy and you can feel super healthy at a level one effort because eating can't be complicated by definition when you do it correctly and if you want to be a level 10 that's cool too we can help you do that and you won't get diabetes and a bunch of other nonsense along the way which if you look at most sort of bodybuilding and other types of prescriptions. There's a lot of insane techniques that go into that. So we're just trying to say, whatever your goals are, do it without compromising your health. I love it. Okay. You're a hero. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Well, April, I'm really looking for, and the only thing I got to ask you is if we're going to, I do need you to actually track this, the compliance to this every day. Cause that's really, that's the big difference is how yeah. intentional and compliant we are with whether it's sane or insane. If we don't do it, we're not going to get the results. So okay. doing it is the key. I will I will commit. I'm going to track it. Now, if I decide it's not worth it, I'll let you know. <laughs> but I'm going to track it. I'm super excited. And I just can't thank you enough, Jonathan. Like you, you've saved my life in so many ways. And I just really appreciate everything you do for me and for everybody. Well, my pleasure, April. I, I appreciate the opportunity very much. And I look forward to our next episode. And I look forward to hearing your results. And now now I'm on the hot seat. But I have all the confidence in the world because eating non-starchy vegetables, nutrient dense protein, whole food fats, in the way we described, can't not work. It's just science. So it's exciting. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. A special thanks. Round of applause for April Perry for putting herself out there. Golf claps. <laughs> and remember, stay sane. <laughs>